Good morning and welcome. My name is Pastor Jeff Snow from First Baptist Church in Port Hope. Welcome you again to another uh, Sunday morning from my office as we are still in the midst of the pandemic restrictions. If you're watching this when we upload it, well, happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. It's May the 10th, 2020. You could be watching this on May 10th or you could be watching this in 2022. Who knows? But whenever you're watching it, we're glad you're here. Glad you could join us. We want to look at a passage of Psalms today. Um, I was online earlier this week with a good friend of mine, Karen, and uh, she's younger than me, so she knows more about computers than I do. And she gave me a, a whole tutorial in a in a program on my computer I didn't even know I had called Windows Movie Maker, which will perhaps enable me to do more stuff, more higher techy stuff with these little talks, but I still need to kind of work with it and work with the tutorial she gave me. So we're still kind of going old school with um, showing you what the passage is that we're going to look at today. Here it is. It's Psalms, is that right? Yeah. Psalms 31 verses 14 to 15. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Psalm 31, 14 and 15. And this passage came to my attention a number of years ago in the middle of a really difficult time. I want to break it down for you. Let's break this verse down and see what we can learn from it and apply to our own lives. First of all, the psalmist says, I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you. The psalmist had come to the conclusion that God is faithful and that he could be trusted. Who... who do you trust? How do you come to understand that you can trust someone? Well, I think you trust people that you know well. The more you know of somebody, the more you, you can trust them. Back when I was a young adult living in Montreal, we uh, the young adults in my church used to be involved in a, um, a basketball ministry. We would go to the Montreal neighborhood of Little Burgundy, and a lot of the kids there were into basketball, and so we had a gym and we played basketball and we did a short Bible study with them. And, and I think 95% of the kids were unchurched and came from really difficult families. And uh, I did it with my, my friends, Randy Johnston and John Ogden and a few other guys and girls came and, and did this program with us. And one day, I think it was John's turn to do a Bible study. And he was doing it on trust. And as an object lesson for trust, he wanted to play the trust game. You know that game where... You stand in front of somebody and you hold your arms out and you, you, the other person is supposed to fall right back into your arms and trust that you will catch them. And so John started doing this to all the kids and I was doing it to some of the kids. And then some of the kids came to me and said, come on, you fall, you fall, Let, I'll catch you. you, you fall into my arms. And I don't think I did it because of trust. A couple of reasons. One of these kids that came up to me was probably in grade six or seven, you know, he was four foot nothing. <laughs> I was six feet tall and uh, I didn't think he was able to catch me. You, as you come to know that someone is actually able to do something, then you're able to trust them. And then I guess it was a character issue too, because a lot of these kids did all kinds of things for jokes that really <laughs> weren't very nice. And honestly, I wouldn't put it past a lot of them just to, let me fall to the ground is a funny joke that they thought their friends would laugh at. Now, probably a lot of them would kind of get mad at, get mad at the kid, but I just didn't trust them because I didn't know some of these kids well enough to be able to do that. The more you know someone, their capabilities, their character, and the more you can trust them. And so to be able to say, I trust in you, God, the important thing is to get to know him understand his capabilities, to understand his power, to understand his character, to understand his, his love and his care for you. And that's why it's so important to, to read the scriptures, to read the Bible and to find out who God is by reading all the, the times in biblical history where he showed himself, where he showed who he was and how he related to his people how Jesus related to, to people, the love that he showed, the teaching that he gave. 
um, the scriptures are God's way of showing us who he is. And then it's so important to pray. God is real. We can have a conversation with him, tell him about our concerns, let him by his spirit speak to our hearts and minds, and, and let us know more about who he is. It's important to be with other people who have committed themselves to follow God and who are also getting to know God better. And so as we share with each other what we've discovered about God and we can learn from each other's experiences, all these things are ways that we get to know God better, know his character. And the more we know who he is, the better we can trust him. And the more we can say with the psalmist, but I trust in you, Lord. Then the psalmist goes on to say, I say, the psalmist says, I say, you are my God. Now this verse comes alive when we have the personal relationship with God. That, that doesn't just say you are a God or you are the God. It says you are my God. The more you get to know God, the more you understand that he is not just some impersonal, um, uninterested force out there. He didn't just create the world and then sit back and let it kind of spin out of control. He, he's, God is someone who created us, loves us, and, and wants to get to know us. Um, he loves us with an unfailing love. He is interested in your life. He wants to be a part of it. There was a TV show back in the 90s, the early 2000s, called Touched by an Angel. And the executive producer of the show was a, was a Pentecostal evangelical Christian. Um, who, in her writing of the show and directing of the show, um, wanted to demonstrate the character of God through different stories in ways that secular audiences would understand. And she would often say the main point at the core of all of the different plots of the show were these three elements. God exists, God loves you, and God wants to be a part of your life. The psalmist says, you are my God, and that is God's desire for all of us, that we would know that God exists, God loves you, and God wants to be a part of your life. And that we can come to that point where we can say with confidence, you are my God, not just someone, we, the faith we have is not just based on our parents, or based on someone else's story and experiences, but our experiences with God tell us that, that he is my personal God, that he wants to be a part of my life. And then it says that my times are in your hands. We are in God's hands. Now being in somebody's hands can be a bad thing. <laughs> Someone says, I can't wait till I get my hands on you. Um, that can be a bad thing. But in terms of God's character, being in his hands is, is a good thing. Um, they are hands of safety, hands of protection hands of, of power, hands that can accomplish things. They are hands of control, hands that are, while they are holding us, they are also holding the entire universe and keeping everything in order. Passage says, my times are in your hands. And the Hebrew word translated times also mean my experiences, the things I've, gone, I've been through, the things I will go through, my experiences. My times are in your hands. And I was thinking of the word time, and we look at time, I suppose, in three different ways. We look at our past, our present, and our future. So this verse really says that, that our past, present, and future are in God's hands. Our past is in God's hands. All of us have things in our past that we'd rather forget. Um, things, mistakes we've made, decisions we've made that weren't so great, sins that we've committed that we wish we could do over again. But in his hands, there is forgiveness. In God's hands, there is forgiveness. He says that when we come to him and ask for forgiveness, he takes our transgressions, our sins, the things we've done that have hurt others, hurt ourselves, and hurt God, and he throws them as far as the east is from the west. The enemy of our souls, the devil, is that there's a good God, there's also an evil devil. And the enemy of our souls would love to bring up our past mistakes. That's one of his favorite things. It, it just remind us of the things we've done in the past and say, how could God love you? Do you think God's really forgiven you of that? The enemy's good at 
replacing doubt by asking questions. But we need to know just how huge God's grace is and how much he desires to forgive us. That we, when we are forgiven, we are forgiven. God's grace is huge. Sometimes in our past, there are things that, that are good. And good or bad or neutral, our past makes up who we are today. And in God's hands, our past experiences go beyond just, you know, that common, common human trait of, of making us who we are today. But God uses our past experiences to mold us into the image of Christ, which is his purpose for us. He uses our past experiences to, to create in us, to help us to live out the life that we were created to live. My times are in your hands, God. My past are in, is in your hands. But also my present is in your hands. And our present can be times that are filled with trouble and difficulty. Everything's right there in front of us and it can seem insurmountable. Sometimes at an, at an individual point of view, but also in terms of society. Again, if you're watching this on May the 10th, 2020, we are in the middle of a pandemic, which creates concern over, over health, over our jobs, over the economy. Our present can be filled with things that are unsettling. But whatever we're going through right now, we can know that those times are in God's hands. And we can rest. Knowing God's character, knowing that God is good, knowing that he loves you, that he's for you and not against you, and that his hands are powerful. You can handle whatever is going on in your life and in society at this time. Our times are in his hands, our past, our present, and our future. Our future, I think, could be the cause of, of the biggest worry. Um, our future is full of what ifs, and we as humans are often tempted to jump to worst case scenarios right away and, and think of all of the possibilities that are negative, all the what ifs. And there's uncertainty in the future, and uncertainty breeds fear. Uncertainty breeds worry. So when we say our times are in God's hands, does that mean that we have, we have no uncertainty in the sense that, well, we know exactly what's going to happen? Well, no. But we can trust that God's hands do hold the future. There's an old gospel song with a line that, in it that says, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. God is sovereign, which means he's the king. He's in control. God's plans will not be thwarted. God works all things out for his glory. What seem to be good things, bad things, neutral things to us, he works all those things out for his glory. And... He works all things out for our good simultaneously. The ultimate good that he knows is good for us. So may this psalm be our prayer today. I trust in you, Lord, because I know who you are and I know you can be trusted. You are my God because I've given my life to you. And my times, God, are in your hands. My past, where there's your forgiveness, and where you use my past experiences to make me into the person you created me to be. My present is in your hands, the present that God is ultimately in control of. And my future is in your hands, the future where God is working all things out for his glory and for our good. Can I pray with you? Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Psalms, which are just so full of very honest prayers and honest statements about how the psalmist felt and about who you are. And Lord, we want to come to the place where we can say with the psalmist, I trust in you. Because I know who you are. I know who you are. You are good. You love me. You are powerful. And I can trust in what you're doing, even when I can't see all the results. Help us, Lord, in the middle of things that can be very difficult and very confusing. Help us, Lord, to trust you, that you know what you're doing. And help us, Lord, to say with the psalmist that you are my God. 
help each one of us to come into that personal relationship with you through Jesus Christ. We know you not just as some impersonal force or something someone else talks about. Help each one of us to know you personally and to know you more through your son, Jesus Christ. And help us, Lord, be able to say with confidence, my times are in your hands, past, present, and future. Thank you, Lord, for just wanting to hold us in your hands. Help us, Lord, to always stay there. Help us, Lord, to trust you that, that all of our times are in your hands, and that our lives are in your hands, and that your purposes for our lives will be fulfilled. Give us, each of us this day, the trust that we need and show us, Lord, who you are so that we can fully and completely say, my time during your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Check out other things on our YouTube channel. Ruth Wilkinson, our worship leader, is posting other devotionals and some songs, music to enjoy. If we could be of any help to you, at First Baptist Church in Port Hope. Give us a call at the church. Old fashioned telephone machine, best way to do it. Give us a call at 905 885 6021. 905 885 6021. Have yourselves a great week and uh, we'll talk to you later.